My grandmother raised me to believe this. A religion that can't take a lick ain't worth a lick. I submit to you in no uncertain terms, the Roman Catholic Church does not have the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Ricky and welcome to Thinking Critically from an Evangelical Worldview. If this is your first time, I'd like to invite you to consider clicking the subscribe button and clicking that bell to be notified of any future videos. Uh, I wrote a chapter in my book and one of the most difficult chapters I wrote was the chapter that I dealt with the uh, subject of Dr. Martin Luther King, who is an icon in the African American community. He is a fraternity brother of mine. Uh, one of the reasons uh, as I was deciding what fraternity to pledge, you know, every fraternity and sorority makes a big issue of their prominent members. And Dr. King is an alpha. And uh, that really uh, helped me to decide uh, which fraternity to pledge. Uh, but um, as I got older and, and, and more mature in my faith, uh, I realized all of in the Roman Catholic view, it is faith plus works that gives us justification. It is grace plus merit that gives us justification. It is Christ plus me and my inherent righteousness that gives me justification. That's the formula in a nutshell. The reformers objected strenuously to this and said, no, uh, this is crossed out by the reformers, this is crossed out by the reformers, and my inherent righteousness is crossed out so that you have faith alone, grace alone, Christ alone. In the Roman Catholic view, it is faith plus works. Okay, so I'm going to just, just play this again. It wasn't even three minutes. So I'm just going to play this and stop at just certain points and kind of just uh, have a few words of commentary. So he begins... Uh, that gives us... He begins with uh, faith plus works. And so again, remember I said one of the, the uh, solas of the Reformation is by faith alone. Rome says it, it's faith plus works. And so remember... The initial entry into salvation begins with justification. And so he's giving you the three different views of uh, the difference between Rome and when he says the reformers, he's talking about the Protestants. And so remember the word Protestant, the root word of Protestant, of course, is protest. And so Martin Luther, he nailed those 95 theses to the church in Wittenberg because he was protesting what he understood the Roman Catholic Church to be teaching. And so the first uh, leg, if you will, is uh, faith plus works. The church, the, the Protestant church, uh, we believe is faith alone. Justification. It is grace plus merit. So again, so merit is something that that we do, uh, and that's where the Bible says it's by uh, faith and faith alone. The moment we add anything, merit is something you get credit for. Uh, think about a Boy Scout term. And so when they did something proper, when they did something correct, they got a merit. Or even school, uh, at, at still at some school, they call them merits and demerits. And so a demerit means you did something bad. And so Rome teaches that, of course, everybody, so all Christians, all professing uh, theists believe in grace. Well, I shouldn't say all, but most. And so grace, they under, so Rome believes in grace, but they say it's grace plus merits. Or another way of saying that is grace plus works. Grace plus me. And again, the Protestant church says it's by grace alone, by faith alone. And eventually it's going to be by Christ alone. 
to the glory of God alone. And, and so that's what sola means, alone. And so the, the Protestant church believes in the five solas, faith alone, grace alone, and so works. Now, works are important, but works flow from salvation. Not It doesn't flow to salvation. So if, if you just understood uh, uh, grace and faith, they're on this side. And then works are on the, works are after. Rome says works have to be before. The church believes works come after. We're saved onto good works. Uh, and so, yes, works are important, but they have nothing to do with justification. Works are part of sanctification. Understand, we're born spiritually dead. What can a spiritually dead person do to, gar to garner any merit? The word answer has to be absolutely nothing. That is why you have to be first born again. You cannot born again yourself. Just as what input did you have in your natural birth? None. That is the same input you have in your spiritual birth. You have to be made alive. So we believe that it's grace and grace alone. The Roman Catholic Church teaches is grace plus merit. And now here's his third point. That gives us justification. Remember, all of this is justification. Is plus me and my inherent righteousness. I just want to stop. Rome believes that a believer is not justified until he has real righteousness. At the end, I'm going to cover... Uh, I show you a, uh, and also a, well, not cover, cover and give you a website. Rome believes that the Protestant church teaches a justification view that's legal fiction. Now, when we talk about faith and we use uh, words to describe it, we use the word forensic faith. And that's a legal term. And so if you understand it in a legal parlance, God has given us what's called a forensic righteousness. And what that simply means, it's a declared righteous. See, again, Ricky Cows is a filthy sinner. And Ricky Cows know that. And if you know Ricky Cows, you probably would heartily agree. But when God looks at me, he looks at me with what we call a forensic uh, declaration. And so God declares me righteous. Because he looks at me through the lens of Jesus Christ. Uh, and there is a term we use, simultus, no, simul justice ec peccador. At the same time, just and sinner. Peccador. That's where we get the word peccadillo. And so Ricky Kyle is at the same, simultaneously, he's just and a sinner. Simul justice ec peccator. The same time, simultaneous, he's a saint and a sinner. So I know I'm a sinner, but God looks at me through the lens of his son, Jesus Christ, and now he sees me as righteous. And, and so I don't have inherent righteousness. That's why Rome says, you must have real righteousness. And that's why they believe in works. That's why they believe in merits. That's why they believe that most Christians are going to die and not have enough righteousness, not have enough merit. Hence, we get the doctrine of purgatory. See, the believer believes the moment he dies, he is, he is instantaneously glorified. Uh, rem remember the golden chain? Whom God has predestined, he's called. Whom God has called, he has justified. Whom God has justified, he has glorified. Romans 8.28, the golden chain, the order salutis of salvation, the order of salvation. And so he had begun a good work, will complete it. If I am truly a believer today, 
I will be glorified. Rome says you don't get to heaven until you have real righteousness. We Protestants, we believe Jesus was 100% true when he said on the cross, John chapter 19, verse 30, it is finished. All that needed to be done to secure my salvation was, was rocked at Calvary's cross. All of my sins, past, present, and future, the sins I have not even yet committed are already nailed to the cross. Rome says, I don't get to heaven until every sin is paid. And because they believe it's by works, it's by merit, and I have to have inherent righteousness. Inherent means it inhues, it inheres within you. You have to be actually righteous. And that's why purgatory, that's why many believers go to purgatory, to those sins are paid. Well, Protestants believe Jesus paid it all. It is finished. And again, brothers and sisters, that is the cosmic difference between Rome and the Protestant church. Three big issues. They believe it's by works. I'm sorry, it's plus works. It's plus merit. And it's plus righteousness. We believe it's by grace. It's by faith. And it's by Christ. Christ paid it all. Uh, and so, brothers and sisters, this is not some tempest in a teapot. This is, again, what Martin Luther said, the church is going to stand or fall. And so either Rome is right or the Protestant church is right. But they, can't, they both can't be right. Now, maybe both of them are wrong. And, and maybe some other denomination has it right. But Rome is saying something diametrically opposed to what the reformers understood in the 16th century. And Rome is still saying today, now let's talk about that. Let's cover what Rome believes about salvation. Soteriology. Okay, so keep in mind, I'm, I'm trying to keep this at a level that we can easily understand. So I'm not gonna try to get into the weeds. I'm just going to cover the major points. And so remember, I told you there have been two Vatican councils. Uh, the first one, uh, you, and, and so I'll walk you through it. And so keep in mind, uh, I'm going to try to keep it at a pretty high level. And again, uh, it's up to you uh, to do your research. Um, as the Bible says, uh, let, it, uh, let every man be convinced in his own mind. And believe it or not, I'm about to sneeze. So, um, uh, and so without further ado, I'm going to be walking you through it's 10 slides. I'm going to try to uh, speak to them uh, intelligently uh, and just give you enough uh, that you can wrap your head around it. Uh, and I implore you to do your research. Uh, if you have brothers and sisters, cousins, relatives, loved ones, whatever, whatever, uh, that are involved in the Roman Catholic Church, I'm trying to give you uh, a once over to understand why that doc, that dom denomination does not have the gospel. And so first, let's begin with uh, Vatican, uh, uh, the uh, Council of Trent. And so at the Council of Trent, and which lasted, uh, I said seven years, it was eight years, from 1545 to 1563, I'm sorry, <laughs> that's 18 years. Uh, that's so you know remember uh, technology moved a little slower back then the declarations which are still in force again Vatican II there have been only two uh, councils uh, so what was decided at Trent is still in operation today the Roman Catholic Church formally condemned the biblical doctrine of faith alone and grace alone they in their official position, they condemn the biblical doctrine of faith alone and grace alone. So consider these statements. This comes out of the sixth session, canon concerning justification, canon number 12. I am pulling this 
directly from the official Roman documents. It says, if anyone says that justifying faith is nothing else than confident and divine mercy, which remits sin for Christ's sake, or that it is confident alone that justifies him, look at the capital letters. This is my emphasis. Let him be anathema. And so what they're saying, anybody who says it's nothing more than faith and divine mercy, for Christ's sake, let him be eternally cursed. That is what Rome taught at the Council of Trent in 1563. That 18 year discussion in response to the Protestant Reformation, Rome came with this statement. Then it also says, if anyone says that the justice received is not preserved and also increased before God through good works, but that these works are merely the fruit and the signs of justification obtained, but not the cause of this increase. Let him be anathema. What this is saying is we as Protestants, we believe that uh, these works, works are a fruit of salvation. Works are not the cause of salvation. Rome says that fruits are the cause of salvation. Again, they say, if you believe that works are just a fruit and not the cause, let him be anathema. This came again out of the sixth session, canons concerning justification. This was canon number 24. Justification by grace alone was denied at Vatican II. Remember, that took place in 1962. So in its most formal and authoritative statement since Trent, since 1563, Rome has continued to deny that salvation is by grace alone, through Christ's atonement alone, through faith alone, without works alone or sacraments. The Roman Catholic Church believe, believes in seven sacraments. The church believes in two, and we don't hold them to be sacraments. We believe them to be ordinance, and we believe those are baptism and the Lord's Supper. Considering, consider the following statements of the authoritative Vatican II councils of the mid 1960s. By that time, that current Pope, which was uh, Pope John Paul the 23rd and attended by more than 2,400 Catholic bishops. This is what they said. For it is the liturgy through which, especially in the divine sacrament of the Eucharist, the work of our redemption is accomplished. And it is through the liturgy, especially that the faithful are able to express in their lives and manifest to others the mystery of Christ and the real nature of the true church. What they're simply saying is the mass. That's why mass is so important in Roman Catholic soteriology. The mass imparts salvation. So you, it, in order to be saved, you need to constantly participate in the mass. And oh, by the way, brothers and sisters, that's why we believe, see, they believe in the mass, Christ is sacrificed all over again. So in Roman Catholic theology, the mass is repeatedly Christ being sacrificed all over again. Next, the Roman Catholic Church believes this. Okay, so uh, this here, here's just the last point. Uh, hopefully this will kind of help you wrap your head around it. Rome believes what's called inherent righteousness. Protestants, we believe in imputed righteousness. 
And so Rome says, until a man is actually has inherent uh, righteousness that actually in, inheres within them. And so they believe a person has to be actually righteous, not forensically righteous, not declared righteous. He actually has to be righteous. And that's the separation between Rome and the reformers. And so uh, I just found this article helpful. I'll include it in the uh, description. And so I just want to read the first paragraph and uh, hopefully that'll shed some light on what's being said here. And so let me make a couple of changes. And so you see uh, why imputation is not a legal fiction as Rome says. Let me let my dog out for a second. There we go. So this is written uh, by uh, who writes this? His well, I don't know his name. Uh, I'll put it, I'll put it in the uh, description. A very common objection from Roman uh, Roman Catholics is against the Protestant Reformation is that God declares someone to be innocent who is not in fact innocent. This is legal nonsense to them. They believe that God would never declare a person to be righteous who is not, in fact, righteous. So the Protestant idea that an alien righteousness, that of Christ, is reckoned to the sinner is nonsense to them. It would be God declaring something to be true, which is actually false. So how do Protestants respond to this? There are a variety of responses, but the best one it seems to be, it seems to me, resides in the metaphor of a marriage union. We would also add a few things afterwards that help us understand. Now, you can read the entire article for yourself, but I just wanted to share with you, Rome sees uh, what Christians believe is legal fiction. We hold that not to be the case. We believe that it, it is a righteousness. It's a righteousness. It's Christ's righteousness. Uh, but that's how Christ, God the Father, sees us. Through the righteousness of his Son. Uh, and so remember, simul justice ek petrator. At the same time, just and a sinner. Christ. Christ knows I'm not righteous. I'm sorry. God knows I'm a filthy sinner. And so it's not it's not a pretend. God sees me through the righteousness of his son. That's why the reformers hold that our righteousness is an alien righteousness. Well, uh, that is a once over view of the Roman Catholic Church. Rome does not have the gospel. They believe it's grace plus works. Faith plus merit, Christ plus us. We believe it's by faith alone, through grace alone, through Christ alone. And you, 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 hopefully you, you hear the, the operative word, alone. And, and so there is a chasmic difference between Rome and the Rome uh, and the Protestant church. I submit to you, my brothers and sisters, with fear and trembling, Rome does not have the gospel. Now, the question about what happens to every individual Roman Catholic, I'll leave that up to God. But brothers and sisters, Galatians chapter 1 verse 8 and 9, if we or any other angel preach any other gospel than which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. My brothers and sisters, to those of you that are in the Roman Catholic Church, I would implore you to leave the Roman Catholic Church. It does not have the gospel. I have spent no time talking about the Pope, talking about purgatory, talking about indulgences, talking about sac. I have not, now I've mentioned them, but I have spent no time making my case about that. My case is about the gospel. My case is what Martin Luther said it was back in the 15th, the 16th century, the doctrine of salvation, the doctrine that the church either stands or falls. I invite you to take this journey with me. I'll continue to cover issues just like this. I will try to look at every issue. 
through the evangelical lens, bringing every thought captive to the word of God. Tomorrow, Lord willing, I will cover uh, the voter right controversy that started in Georgia and now has made its way to the great state of Texas. And I submit to you, when, uh, when President Biden said these new measures were the new Jim Crow, that should have been an insult to any sane thinking African American who knows our history and knows what Jim Crow was, what, what it looked like and what for many who are my previous generation, what it felt like. I ask you to again, consider clicking that subscribe button, clicking that bell to be notified and without any further ado, keep your hands to the plow, serve for an audience of one. Lord willing, I'll see you tomorrow.